Hello monkeys! Today I'm gonna show you the new material definition editor uh, that is based on the new uh, shader node system. Uh, this is more intended as a demonstration or a tour uh, of the new uh, editor than a tutorial, but well, I'm gonna show you how to create a simple material definition and add some texture mapping support to it. So let's go. I'm gonna go here and, and click on new other in the material folder here I'm gonna choose material definition template. I'm gonna okay, call it mat def my mat def okay and here we go. So here it just gives you some uh, default material definition so uh, that's a classic material definition without shader uh, in, in the technic but with shader nodes so uh, the point is to show you the graphical editor so uh, here we go there so that's how it's gonna be here in the editor you can notice uh, those two arrows those are the outputs of the shaders here it's the global output of the vertex shader and here it's the global output of the fragment shader. You can move everything in the in the editor like this. So uh, just to sum it up, the to make the shader work you need to output uh, the position of the vertex projection space into the output position and a color in the color position. So this shader that is very 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 basic is just doing this, transforming uh, the, the vertex position from model space to projection space and just assigning a color to the pixel based on a material parameter. So uh, let's show you around. Here you got a, a, a quick overview of the, of the file uh, you can see uh, each node and the connections, input and output. And uh, here you got you have some property panel with uh, some uh, properties that you can edit for each node or uh, connections. So as you can see here, you have also a color. That's the color material parameter. This is intended as uh, only testing uh, parameters uh, to allow you to to see how your shader uh, behave with uh, this or uh, that uh, material parameter. So don't mind the the white color assigned to color here. That's just a problem in the editor. I, I, in fact, this is not set at all. That's why well, now it's set. <laughs> so that's why now you have the white color. So that's kind of I'm uh, going to show you, um, let's choose the, a yellow color, it's going to be flashy like this, and as you can see the preview are updated in real time. How does this work? It just generates a shader, two shader uh, actually, so in the shader tab here you can see what is generated, this is the vertex shader generated, and this is the fragment shader that we're using. You can switch between uh, GLSR versions because the generator handles are uh, uh, depending on the capabilities of the of the um, of the GPU uh, what uh, version it choose it, it has to generate a shader for. So here for example for the shader with GLSL 1.5 or GLSL 1.0. Uh, so uh, let's go. I'm gonna show you how to add uh, shader support to this shader. So I'm gonna right click on the, on the background and add a new node. So here are some uh, stock shader nodes that I did. Uh, those are really whips right now. Like this one is not working at all. I was kidding. Uh, it's just. Uh, 
it's just some kind of uh, empty shell to just the purpose of uh, the demonstration. What uh, right now what I'm interested in is this one, texture fetch, because I want to uh, uh, grab a pixel inside a texture. So here you can see you can see the type of the shader node, the GLSL minimal version, the path to the shader frag, the shader code actually. A description and description of inputs and outputs. So this node just fetches the color value in the given texture according to given texture coordinates. Oh, there's a missing C here. I'll fix it. Um, it. It takes two inputs, texture and texture coordinates, and gives an out color that is the fetch of fetched uh, pixel in the in the texture. So let's go. Okay, so what I need for this uh, this node is to, is a texture. Texture are um, always uh, material parameters, so, so I'm gonna add a material parameter here. Choose um, texture 2D and call it color map. Okay. So now I have a new material, uh, material parameter called color map. I'm gonna connect this uh, to the texture. Oh, I'm gonna show you. You cannot connect something with a different type. For example, I cannot connect a texture to a texture card because it makes no sense. So the editor is just preventing you to to do this. So I'm gonna connect it with texture. And here we go. My texture is now connected to my node. And now I need texture coordinates. So texture coordinates are coming from the the meshes of attributes. So here you can see that the common word a support for it, for it. It just takes an attribute here and output it as a varying that can be sent to um, a, a fragment shader node. So I'm gonna add an attribute. I need uh, in text coordinates. I'm just keep the default type here, and here we go. I have my attribute. I just input it as text chord one, and now I can connect the text chord one uh, varying to my text chord here. So uh, not sure it's gonna generate something now. Uh, yes, actually you can see here that now I have a varying in my shader node, in my fragment node, and a varying here. My uh, vertex node. So I'm gonna show you how it works. And for the sake of the the hour effect, I'm go just gonna set the texture before. And choose the fairy texture. Okay. And now I'm gonna connect the output color to my global output. And here we go. So you have the texture here, of course, with the yellow color overlay. We that is that was added uh, by default. So that is a very basic example. Of course, uh, shader now I'm at, uh, shaders are meant to do a lot more things. But I'm not gonna go to the details because uh, time is uh, running really fast. So now I'm just gonna use the generated shader. As you can see now, I have my texture fetch node, the code that has been added to my uh, global shader code. And it just fetch a color into a texture map and set it to the global output color. Then the color is, is used here with color 2 and multiplied with the material parameter, assigned again to the uh, output color, and just and the at the end the output color is assigned to GFRAC color. That's how I get my texture color like this. So this is a very quick overview of the, oh, and of course, my material definition has been updated here. I got my texture fetch uh, definition uh, into my uh, material definition. You can save it. And now you can use this shader into the inside the, the engine. So that was a very quick overview. Uh, course I'm gonna make other videos and tutorials about it because there's a lot to cover and uh, I hope this you'll enjoy it 
uh, it's gonna be released night next nightly and I hope uh, you'll enjoy it. Goodbye.